the things that make up our lives are things that are directly connected to our hearts, our minds. If we fill our hearts, we fill our minds with pornography, immodesty, lust, passion, unbridled, it sets ourselves up to give in to the temptation for physical sin. But there's another contributing factor to adultery, not just our hearts. That's where it ultimately ends up. That's where it all starts. But another thing that can contribute to the temptation has to do with the condition of one's relationship with his spouse. You see, one may increase the severity of temptation for his spouse uh, if the needs of that spouse are not being met in the home. You see, if the emotional and physical and social and companionship needs of a spouse, a wife or a husband, if those needs are not being met by the spouse, then he or she may become more susceptible to the temptation to have those needs met by someone else that they think will meet those needs. Now please rest assured that does not in any way excuse an extramarital affair. It doesn't excuse adultery. I'm simply pointing out that it can contribute to the severity of the temptation on the part of another. In other words, if, for instance, if, uh, if, my, uh, if my wife's needs are not being met by me, then she may naturally look to find those needs to be met in someone else. And therefore the temptation is increased by the fact that I'm not being what I'm supposed to be as a husband. And so we must guard our hearts, we must guard our minds, we must guard our eyes, and we must make sure that we are not contributing to the severity of the temptations in another by not fulfilling our responsibilities in the home. Well, those are some of the matters related to cause. Now let's turn our attention to the consequences. What are the consequences of adultery? And if we really thought about these and allowed them to sink into our minds, I believe we'd be less tempted to give in uh, to uh, the temptation. Jesus said you can know a tree by its fruit. He made that or stated that principle in Matthew 7, verses 16 through 20. You know a tree by the fruit it produces. What kind of fruit does the tree of adultery produce? Let me invite your attention to the fifth chapter of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs has a lot to say about adultery and about the temptation to adultery and about the need to, uh, to watch out and to be protected and guarded against that temptation. And in Proverbs chapter 5, we find uh, uh, Solomon talking about the consequences of giving in to that temptation, giving in to the seductress and committing adultery. Look at these in uh, Proverbs 5, beginning in verse 10. Uh, well, first of all, you go back and uh, you see the command in verse 8, Proverbs 5, Remove your way far from her. Do not go the, near the door of her house. Talking about the adulteress. Why? Verse 10, Lest aliens be filled with your wealth, and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. He says here that one of the consequences of committing adultery can be the loss of your wealth, the loss of money, the loss of material possessions. You ever hear of alimony? Child support? Why do people have to pay alimony? Child support? Well, in many cases it's because of adultery. It's because they gave in to the temptation and it ended their marriage and now they're in a position to where their wealth is being taken because of their indiscretion. Look at verse uh, number 11, Proverbs 5. Uh, and lest you aliens be filled with your wealth, verse 11, and you mourn at last when your flesh and your body are consumed. Talks about the consumption of flesh and body. In other words, physical health can be affected. How many diseases do some people have to deal with because 
of adultery. I'm talking about physical diseases, sexually transmitted diseases and the like. Loss of physical health. What about a loss of your mental health and stability? Proverbs 5, 12, and 13. And you say, How I have hated instruction, and my heart despised correction. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to those who instructed me. Here's the man who's crying out uh, in recognizing the fact that he didn't listen. He should have listened, and he didn't. And it's tormenting him. So one can be overcome with guilt and shame. David in Psalm 51 verse 3 in responding to his guilt over the sin of adultery he said my sin is ever before me. I've spoken with those that have been guilty of adultery and I guess if there's one thing that they carry with them it's that. If they have a heart that's still pliable and can be touched by truth they carry with them guilt and shame my sin is ever before me. It's one of the consequences of adultery. What about the loss of one's reputation? Look at Proverbs 5 verse 14. I was on the verge of total ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregation. He's talking about how others saw him and the fact that others did and others knew who he was and knew what he had done in the midst of the congregation. I was on the verge of total ruin. And so in those few short verses, verses 10 uh, through 14 of Proverbs 5, you have these consequences that accompany the sin of adultery, loss of wealth, loss of physical health, loss of emotional health, loss of reputation. And look in the next chapter, chapter 6, verse 33. Wounds and dishonor he will get, and his reproach will not be wiped away. Again, he's talking about the one who succumbs to the temptation of the adulteress. You know, another of the consequences of this sin is the temptation to increase sin, to add sin upon sin. We mentioned in passing David's adultery that he committed with Bathsheba. And after that sin had been committed, you read about how David then tried to cover it up. His adultery led him to be tempted and then he gave in to the temptation to try to cover up that sin. And it led to deceit and murder. But it began with an unguarded and unprotected mind which led to adultery. Now forgiveness is certainly possible. And the consequences of adultery don't have to be eternal torment. You can be forgiven as David was, and he talked about how blessed a condition he was in because of his forgiveness, Psalm 32, verses 1 and 2. Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 through 11, and talked about some of the sins that they had come out of, and adultery was one of the ones that he mentioned. He said, such were some of you, but you were washed, sanctified, and justified. And so, yes, you can be forgiven of the sin of adultery, but many times, though the guilt of that sin is washed away, the consequences remain. The consequences remain. And so consider the consequences before you give in to that temptation. Well, we've looked at the cause. We've looked at the consequences. Now let's take a few minutes and consider prevention. How do you prevent this? How do you keep from giving in to the temptation to commit adultery? Let me offer you just a few ideas. First of all, let me encourage you to develop a hatred for sin. Just in general, we need to develop a hatred, and I mean that word in the strongest way that I can, a hatred for sin. David said in Psalm 119, verse 104, Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Is that your attitude towards sin? Do you hate sin? Paul encouraged in Romans 12, verse 9, Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Too many times I'm afraid we don't hate sin. 